<laughs> so, thought why not do a little bit of video? I wanted to download Google Earth, like the specific program for the computer, but it was not working. But I thought I would do this video because there's a certain story to tell y'all, but also because I remembered to do this because just uh, the day before I'm recording this, we finally went through the trailer park that I lived in from 1997 to 2006. Now, I don't remember the exact month in 97 when we moved in, but I do remember we left around January, February 2006 officially. But this, as long as the mouse is going to show, is the entire, tra the entire trailer park that we used to live in. And it's taken me till now to see this part of the map to see how big it really was. Because around here was like the only part we ever lived in. Now you see, this is also the road that we were living in throughout that whole time. Right here is a new trailer that was here. Now, I think it was like a handful of years after we left. Our original trailer that was there, right where the cursor is on the screen, was somehow taken away somewhere. I think the last owners were evicted for some reason and it was just left with nothing and it took until like maybe a few years ago according to what i saw google earth on my other computer that they finally put a new trailer there and we just passed by it yesterday and finally saw the trailer that's there now where ours used to be a different trailer and everything but it's like we were going looking down the roads and everything and everything just changed compared to when we moved out of there in 2006 because even sometimes we would travel through the neighborhood and just look and there would be so many empty spaces. Like you could easily see the next street, like north or south, because there were so many wide gaps. Like I remember this being our trailer where we lived. The trailer here, in fact, let me find the newspaper a second because I know I got it. Somewhere. Oh, not it. The trailer that the cursor is on now used to have my old neighbor. And what I have here is a newspaper where the headline came from 2004. Now y'all can see here. My old neighbor Brandon was killed in a car accident back in 2004. The night before his 18th birthday. He's traveling out of the trailer park to go to work in order to pick up his fiance, and as he tried to get on the highway, killed on impact. But anyway, uh, I thought I'd look at some of these other ones quick a minute, because that's not the story we're discussing today. Never knew they had trailers with blue or red roofs. This one down here used to be one of my old babysitters. They used to live there back in the day. I know there was a couple trailers within here. I guess they're suddenly empty where we had a couple neighbors that we used to know for like for a while. We had neighbors that lived right about here. They moved out a year or two after we moved in, which is kind of weird. Uh, this one area, yeah, right here is the whole mailbox area that they got. And back here is more like a dump area. Always had to be here for the bus, like, if I wanted to wait inside instead of outside during the rain or the snow or anything for when the freaking bus stop was going on. Because when I first was going there, there were three bus stop locations that we went to. Right here where the mailbox area is. Second area is right around here where the front entrance area is for a couple spots. And around here... Yeah, it has to be right in here is the playground area. We used to have to wait around here for the bus stop too. But it's like, the weird thing is, we are we were living right here, and yet the trailer, the nearest bus stop is right here, where the mailbox area is, and yeah, we got told, oh no, you have to go all the way out by the entrance. Like, I'm walking all the way that far. It's like, we go all the way out there, it's like long distance, and it was like the second bus stop, so it's like, by the time the bus turns around, like, I think it goes down, like along the street, goes around the back behind the mailboxes, picks up the kids here, and then picks up the ones over here. By that point, there are already enough kids to the point where it's a full bus. I always hated that. Uh, and before I tell the big story, there was another story I always wanted to bring up that there was one point where I actually had a 
bike accident right along here. Because when we go up the go out of our neighborhood area, go north here, then this road up here leads to an upward hill. And then, then it's like a downward slant from here. There's one instance where I rode my bike down here, because I didn't know there was this whole way to go around this section of the neighbor of the trailer park outside of that hill originally. There's one point where I went down the hill and all of a sudden my bike started to wobble. And all of a sudden it just completely collapsed on me. So, thankfully I had my helmet on. When I, I think I was knocked out for a bit. Then I woke up and all of a sudden my bike was on me. And the handlebar was pretty much pushed into my stomach area. And I could see like a whole red mark when I got the bike off me. So, <laughs> painful moment. But that leads to the purpose of today's story. And that was the fact that in 6th grade... I was the victim of assault. So here's exactly what happened. I'm going to try to admit names. Let me zoom in just a bit. So this was back in sixth grade. It was in the cold, so... I'm trying to go based on my timeline. That was around the end of 2003 or early 2004, I believe. Because I know the 2001-2002 school year when 9-11 happened, I was in fourth grade. So yeah, it had to be the 2003 to 2004 school year when it happened. Remember, it was in the winter and there was this big guy. Well, not big in terms of height, but in terms of being more of girth. He was a complete bully to me back then. Like, this guy would just torture me. Talk down to me, shove me around. There's one point where he freaking knocked my stuff out of my hands for no reason in the lunch area. Like a complete jerk. But things came to a head. I can't remember the exact month, but I know it was in the winter period because there was snow out here when this incident happened. And I remember he was just talking shit, and one of our other friends, James, was with him. Now, James, far better guy compared to this guy. But I remember, like, the bus stop we were going through was right over here at the entrance area. So we would get dropped off here, and then I would have to walk home. But on this day was when everything changed. So we start here from the entrance area, go down the street, and then go on to my street. Now, James and this big guy were walking here on this side of the road, closest to like, the side of the road that had closest with the red house and everything where my house is. I was on the, this side of the road, the right side, still going in the direction, going eastward. So they're on the left side. I'm on the right side. Shit talking is going back and forth. And I remember in my hands, I had my trombone case, because yes, I was in band class, sadly. But there was shit talking and everything, and then all of a sudden, the big guy looks behind him down the road and then starts charging at the side of the road I'm at. And I also look behind to see what exactly he's looking at. There was absolutely nothing on the road. No vehicles, no people or anything. As soon as I look back, <laughs> plows right into me. I get knocked in the snow, my stuff's knocked out of my hands, and he's constantly kicking me while I'm down in the snow, kicking me all over the place. Eventually, James helped pull him off, and they both left. But that was not fun. And then again, it's easy for anybody to knock me down because I'm underweight and everything, but get knocked down there, left in the snow, constantly kicked everywhere, he eventually walked off. And as soon, like, I had to, it had to be somewhere around midway down the road, because I know it wasn't quite at my house yet, so it was somewhere midway down the road. But I eventually made it home. First instinct, even though my, she was at work, I called my grandmother. I was just, like, saying what happened and everything. She called the school, and vice principal for sixth grade called us back, because they had vice principal for sixth grade and then one for seventh grade back when we still had junior high and all that stuff. She called me back. And eventually, like, we sat in the office area, and the big guy tries to claim two things that happened during that. Number one, he claimed I was attacking him with my trombone case. And number two, he said the reason he ran across the road because he thought there was a car coming up the road and everything. Two problems with that, though. Number one, how can I be attacking him with my trombone case if we were on the opposite sides of the street? Again, he was on this side of the road, I'm down on this side. Not even within reaching distance. So it's like, how could I be hitting him? And number two, saying that he ran across the road because he thought a car was coming? Think about that for just a moment. We're here in America. 
we know how cars travel on a certain side of the road. If there was a car coming up from behind, it would have been down here on this side of the road that I was walking on, not him. And I saw there was absolutely no vehicles down here coming along the road at all. Otherwise, there would have been somebody witnessing what happened. Just like, if there was a car coming on the side of the road they were on, it would have been coming at them, not from behind on the side of the road they were on. So he's claiming I was attacked, like assaulting him, or with my trombone case, which is BS, because again, out within reaching distance, and then saying a car was coming off the side of the road, so that's why he ran across. No. If a car was coming, it would have been on the side of the road I was walking on, not him, because if there was one on the side of the road he was on, it would have been coming at him from the front, not from behind. And then we also brought in James as a witness, because he was the only other person around. He testified saying that I did not hit him or anything, no cars were coming or anything like that. Completely cleared, completely cleared me out of there. I don't remember if he ever got, the big guy ever got punished. I didn't hear of anything. I just assumed like the vice principal was talking to him. I already left the office and everything. And I remember like this was like the end of the school day. So it was like sixth, the last school period. I had science class. I walked in there with my stuff and everybody saw me. They're like, aww. I like, oh, moment. I freaking returned. I'm not much. What a bunch of jack-offs they were. But anyway, I guess that's the whole story, folks. About the time that I got assaulted back in sixth grade. It was like, it kind of brought back memories. Like, th And this was also the same trailer park where I almost got stabbed over a Yu-Gi-Oh card. It was one of these three spots in here where that trailer where I almost got stabbed over a Yu-Gi-Oh card happened in. It was. It had to be one of these two, unless it was because, unless it could have been also this one if it was a different trailer. But I know it was right down in here where that stabbing incident almost happened. In. So it was like, yeah, this was not a fun trailer park to live in. But anyway, let me know your thoughts, guys, in the comment section below, and I'll catch you all later. Thanks for listening, everybody. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace out, and good day, everybody.